Hello, this is Agil from Academy Abyss. So, today, 22nd October 2022, we are going to discuss a total of 9 topics which are all related to the Hindu newspaper. So, the interested aspirants can download the PDF from this Telegram link. So, shall we move on to the topic? The first topic is take immediate action against the hate speech which is issued by Supreme Court. So, what the uh, judges of Supreme Court are saying is even in 21st century, the climate of hate prevails in the country. The climate of hate prevails in the country. And the police must not wait for the complaint to be registered. If they hear any hate speeches, they should complain without waiting for any complaints to be registered. Um, the judges are deeply concerned about the hate speech, hate speech environment in our country. So, this is the statement of Justice K. M. Joseph. Where we, where have we reached? What have we reduced religion to? It is tragic. And if we speak of this scientific number, very shocking statements have been made in the country that has to be religion neutral. Our country is a secular country, means it has to be religion neutral. So, in our constitution, there is no definition for hate speech. Even in the United Nations, they, they didn't give any clear definition for hate speech. But they have given certain synonyms for what is meant by hate speech. So, according to the United Nations, hate speech can be conveyed through any form of expression, which includes images, cartoons, memes, objects, gestures and symbols and it can be disseminated online or offline. Since it's a modern technology, we have to include the term online because nowadays the crimes are increasing in online media, online platform, right? So hate speech is discriminatory, which is based by us, bigoted or intolerant or pejorative, means prejudiced contemptuous or demeaning of an individual or group. Hate speech calls out real or perceived identity factors. Means, it calls out, uh, for example, uh, a community. Community named as A. Maybe in their past, they may be thieves. Right? Like the uh, a community which is involved in uh, robbing. Okay, so at the present time, these communities have changed. They have give, uh, they have they have been practicing another professions, but still, some people will be actively calling this group A as thieves, which is wrong. Which, uh, this is what they have defined. Hate speech calls out real or perceived identity factors of an individual or a group, including religion, ethnicity, national, race, color, descent, gender, but also characters such as language, economic, or social origin. It may be from any of these groups, including religion, ethnicity, religion, race, color, descent, gender, or such as language, economic or social origin, disability, health status or sexual orientation among many others. So, even though do, we don't have any um, rules or laws or any definition related to hate speech in our country, according to in IPCC section 295A, deliberate and malicious act intended to outrage religious feeling, right? deliberate and malicious acts intended the outrage of religious feelings of any class by insulting its religious or religious beliefs can be booked under the act of section 295a in IPCC. Okay, so shall we move on to the topic 2? Our critically endangered Indian great busters are now migrating to the Pakistan. So, let us understand what is Great Indian Buster. Great Indian Buster can be found in the state book, 
can be found mostly in the Rajasthan and it is designated as state bird of Rajasthan. So it is one of the most critically endangered bird. And the next step of critically endangered is extinct. So it has only less populations. I think around only 95 birds of great Indian bustard is found at the present time. It is considered as a flagship grassland species. So what is meant by flagship grassland species? Uh, if you have a good amount of ecosystem like grassland ecosystem, we can see these birds in those grasslands. So it is considered as a flagship grassland species representing the health of the grassland ecology. This population is mostly confined to Rajasthan and Gujarat. They both are neighboring states. Small populations occur in Maharashtra, Karnataka and Andhra Pradesh. This bird is in constant threat due to pollution of and electrocution with the power transmission lines. Hunting still prevalent in Pakistan, habitat loss and alteration as a result of widespread agriculture expansion. So protection status, IUC red list and under the sites it comes under appendix 1 and under, under the convention on migratory species also it comes under appendix 1. It has to be given appendix 1 because we have seen that only less species around 95 to 100 species are found or are present at the present time. Under the Wildlife Protection Act 1972 it comes under schedule 1. So let me explain why this uh, point is important. See these birds uh, you can see here. These birds are heavy birds. So it can't fly high. It will be flying in a lower altitude and our electric post is also in lower altitude. Uh, man, uh, uh, I think our uh, post will be around uh, Mm, 6 meters to 8 meters electrical post and it will be flying around this height and when they fly over these heights they will come under the uh, attack of electrocution and they will instantly die right so government is actively taking steps to reduce this reduce the depth of great indian busters under electrocution and hunting you can see this bird I think it tastes very good. I don't know. I should not say it. But the uh, hunting is still prevalent in Pakistan and they are killing these birds even now. Right now. Okay. So the great Indian busters deep in Pakistan's Cholistan desert has given rise to speculation that these birds are migrating to Pakistan. In India, it is uh, it can be greatly seen in Indian's Desert National Park DNP okay so its population is about 150 in rajasthan and that accounts 95 percentage of total world population the captive breeding captive breeding means it is captured and it will be uh, breeded in the captured environment uh, so that it will not get uh, what to say it will not get disturbed or it will not get killed by some other hunters in the captive environment, necessary items such as food uh, and its uh, um, uh, and its gen uh, gender partner, everything is given to it so that it will be uh, in safe environment and the population of the great Indian bustard can be expanded through the captive breeding method. Right. So. We will be moving on to the topic number 3. SC as sets aside appointment of Tech Varsity Vice Chancellor in Kerala. This topic belongs to Central State Relations. Every universities in the states, uh, maximum, maximum universities in the states, its Vice Chancellor will be our governor. And there will be the clash between and it will be the clash between the central and the state because the governor it is said that governor is an agent of central government so the clash begins here uh, in appointment to the vice chancellor the central government has already framed rules under university grants commission right at the same time 
the universities the kerala government has also enacted an act known as university act 2015 and the government has appointed a vice chancellor kerala government has appointed a vice chancellor under this law university act 2015 right so one of the professor has filed a case against the appointment of new vice chancellor so the high court what the high court have said is the laws framed by the central government will stand above the law framed by the state government and this will always be the law framed by the central government this is the essence of this topic and you can see uh, central law in this case ugc regulations would prevail over the state law to the extent of conflict between the two statutes right so we will be moving on to the next topic an online fight where children need to be saved so last month cbi in conducted searches across the state and the union territories as a part of pan india operation and the operation's name is mega chakra mega chakra the operation against the circulation and sharing of child sexual abusive material it is known as csam child sexual abusive material okay similarly in 20 november 2021 we also conducted an operation known as operation carbon under which we got input interpol agents uh, we got inputs under singapore Sing- singapore got inputs under new zealand uh, that there are many uh, online abusive style sexual abusive materials are circulating in the network right so in india actually viewing a porn is not an offense viewing porn is not offense but downloading or exchanging child pornography is an offense punishable act under it act right however internet service providers are exempted from liability of third party if they do not initiate the transmission means uh, if if you open any porn, porn websites in google chrome and view any child sexual abuse materials in any porn website means you cannot make google chrome liable for that one because they are not transmitting in the transmitter is the website right so in america and british um in uh, an ngo known as ncmc national center for missing and exploited children have operates a program called cyber tipline in which a public can report if they view any content based on csam similarly in uk also they have uh, they have an ngo known as iwf which they can report if they see any uh, contents related to csam in the effort in india in shreya singhal case it act we know the it act uh, in which is uh, read the section section 79 of 3 of b of the it act to me which isp only upon receiving actual knowledge about the information uh, the supreme court or government can block certain websites from the internet similarly in uh, 2013 a person known as kamlesh waswani uh, sought a complete ban on pornography and there is an ngo known as rmb india partnered with iwf launched india's first online reporting portal in september 2002 to report images and child videos of child abuse okay similarly minister of home affairs also launched a national cyber crime reporting portal in september 2018 for filing online complaints this file this facility was developed in compliance with the supreme court also national crime records bureau signed a memorandum with ncmc that we have seen in 
United States in April 2019 to receive cyber tip line proposed to facilitate action against those who upload or share CSAM in India. Similarly, in uh, a committee, a uh, constitutional committee under the leadership of Jairam Ramesh has given a report that there is an alarming issue of pornography on social media and its effect on children and society as a whole. Right. So what we need to do? According to the 9th edition of ICMEC Child Sexual Abuse Material Model Legislation Global Review has been accepted by more than 30 countries under which requires mandatory reporting of CSAM by ISP. ISP means Internet Service Providers. So, according to the 9th edition, ICMEC has signed, has been signed with 30 countries that in those countries, Internet Service Providers has to report if there is any content of CSAM in their um in their delivery of their service okay similarly the operational optional protocol of united nations optional this is not mandatory this is optional protocol to the united nations convention on the rights of children that addresses sexual exploitation encourages state parties to establish liability of legal persons it should establish liability means it should give punishment to the persons who publishes the CSAM contents. Also, India should join in hope, which is a program of Interpol to secure IT infrastructure or collaborate with ISPs in preventing CSAM materials circulating in the internet. Right? So we shall look what are the laws for pornography in India. Right now there is no law banning watching pornography in the personal space. After the Supreme Court's order, the Department of Telecommunication banned several websites containing child pornography materials. Not fully, only child pornography materials. As per the Information Technology Act 2002, it is punishable to show children any pornographic content. It is punishable to show children to show children any pornography content. So uh, there are two law, uh, laws which are related to the punishment for uh, using child for pornographic purposes. POSCO Act 2012 use of child for pornographic purposes may be present for five years here minimum five years. Use of child for pornography in penetrative sexual assault use of pornography in aggravated penetrative sexual assault so you can see this right a crisis improving in coffee industry so we will see what is coffee and what is the coffee industry so in india or generally coffee plants require a hot and humid climate with the temperatures ranging from 15 degrees celsius and 28 degrees celsius and rainfall from 150 to 250 centimeter Frost, snowfall, high temperatures above 30 degrees Celsius and strong sunshine is not good for coffee crops. And strong sunshine and not above 30 degrees Celsius. Okay. Dry weather is necessary at the time of ripening of berries. At the last time, at the ripening of berries, dry temperature is necessary. No, there should be no rains during this time. No rains. Stagnant water is harmful. Uh, when we see this word stagnant water, which crop comes in your mind? Rice. Right? Stagnant water is harmful and the crop is grown on hilly slopes at elevation from 600 to 1600 meters above sea, sea level. At the hilly slopes, water cannot be stored or stagnant because it will go since it is in a slope. Right? Well drained loams containing a good deal of humus and minerals like iron and calcium are ideal for coffee cultivation. Soil types 
uh, for co coffee can be grown on lot of soil but the ideal types are fertile volcanic red earth or deep sandy loam for coffee it is important that the soil is well drained which makes heavy clay or heavy sandy soils is inadequate in india uh, coffee is mostly grown over karnataka then kerala and tamil nadu karnataka is the largest producer accounting for 70 percentage of the coffee production Coffee cultivation is also expanded rapidly in the non-traditional areas of Andhra Pradesh and Odisha as well as in the northeast states since the climate is favorable in these areas. So we will see. The most of the coffee is produced in the state known as Karnataka, mostly in the area Chikmangalur. Right? So in the recent rain. In the recent rain which we have experienced in the southern states, especially Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, uh, most of the coffee production has went down. As we have seen, this coffee production does not require um, rainfall at the time of blooming. So, around 30% of their crops have been destroyed. India is a country in which 75% of food is exported. Right. So, also, here in India, in coffee, uh, making the coffee production, we have the lower productivity due to the highest cost of production. Is, we can see the statement here. It makes coffee cultivation unviable. Earlier, the cost of production would go only to 4 to 5 percentage annually, but now it has gone to 20 percentage. See, you can see the cost of production has went to 20 percentage. So, where will they see the profit? Earlier, it was only just 4 to 5 percentage. Most plantations simply don't find skilled labors. Also, now we, fa now we face a huge problem of skilled labor. Yeah, I know this uh, problem because I am in the state of Kerala. In Kerala, uh, my relatives are uh, using, uh, my relatives are growing rubber plants. Earlier, in village, people only have certain professions. So, one of the key profession of the people is, uh, uh, is cultivating their rubber plants. So, we got a lot of employees where... Uh, past 10 years um, right now villages have also improved and they have a lot of employment opportunities uh, and the uh, cost for skilled labor have also increased so it, uh, we find it more, uh, more difficult in finding some skilled labors in cultivating these rubber plants right now okay Similarly, India has an identity crisis in global markets. Even though in India, if, uh, if we produce 100% coffee, we export 70% of coffee uh, seeds to other countries, right? But we don't have any special variety in India. Actually, in India, we, uh, coffee plantation is not... Uh, native to India. Coffee plant is not native to India. Uh, actually, the history comes as when people went to, uh, when native people went to countries such as uh, Middle East, they went to country known as Yemen. From there, they smuggled few seeds to India and they started growing these seeds in. Uh, after tasting the coffee, they smuggled few seeds to India, especially to Karnataka and they started producing here right and they found the climate to be suitable for coffee production after that the dutch people came to india and when they colonized a few parts of karnataka they also promoted the coffee production since they found it to be profit okay so the um, the variety that we are doing is known as robusta and arabic both are both belongs to and Middle East varieties, Robusta, Robusta coffee type and Arabic, Arabica. So we don't have any special variety 
of coffee okay also since due to the high productivity cost and the cost we export is more and it is not attractive to the other peoples okay so these are the problems these problems has to be faced by establishing a separate coffee board by government right now gov government is not also concentrating on this coffee production government has to establish a separate coffee board so that the coffee production and the coffee export can be increased it has a huge potential in uh, indian market as well as in the foreign market so shall we move on to the next topic terrorism is a worst form of human rights violation uh, we know that um, interpol meeting is held in india right in new delhi so uh, before starting before going to the no details we will see what is meant by interpol it is set up in 1923 a secure information sharing platform between the national police agencies in our india who is national police agency it is cbi right similarly united states has fbi these agencies coordinate with one another uh, and they will initiate actions against the criminals so the uh, uh, the agencies joined by one another this group is known as interpol it was formed in 1923 okay so notices are issued by general secretary at the request of member countries interpol national central bureau national police i said national police agency it is national central bureau that correct term is national central bureau on their request to general secretary i mean on the request of cbi's request to central secretary they will initiate the action and they will circulate this notice to other member countries not only cbi can uh, send notice to general secretary it can also send to other important international organizations such as united nations so what are the notices in uh, interpol and the meaning of the notices red red notice means wanted person yellow notice missing person blue notice means additional information black notice means unidentified bodies green notice means money and intelligence orange notice means imminent threat purple notice means modus operandi okay so whatever home minister said it in terrorism there is no distinction of good and bad terrorism in the meeting what our home minister has highlighted is there is no distinction of good or bad terrorism similarly there is no distinction is small incident or bad incident if a term terrorism means it is an offense and it should be punished right similarly uh, now we are seeing or we are experiencing new types of crimes right due to the advancement of technology so uh, the interpol has to make ready by its for itself to experience new types of crimes and to solve these new types of crimes which will happen uh, next to 50 years or next 100 years based on their experience of past 100 years okay so we will be moving on to the next topic state governments cannot enter into the broadcasting on their own so uh we uh, recently tamil nadu has started a new tv uh for uh, exclusively for the education okay um where is that is that ah uh, okay yes we can see here um the law uh, they move may have political implications as some of those could be impacted by the advisory at tamil nadu kalvi tv rs cable so according to the uh, inb ministry only government government channels means it should be only doordarshan other than that there should be no other broadcasting channels this is the advisory of inb ministry so you can see the details here 
it is uh, also we can see a, a center state relations not only uh, this advisory is given to state governments it also given to another other central ministries also and these issue uh, and these advisories has been given under the ambit of 2023 trais uh, advisory right okay so we will be seeing the next topic next topic is india builds medium range ballistic agni prime so agni prime is a new advanced variant of agni class it is a canister missile so what is meant by canister missile we have seen in uh, republic days drills we have a, we will have a lorry and the lorry on the load of the lorry we will be having missiles like sharp pointed missiles projected here right this is known as a missile but what is meant by canister missiles you, you have seen uh, s400 right it will be kept like this this is known as canister missile so what is meant by canister missile it is used for storage and it will have few technologies for propulsion also here the propulsion has to be done by the fuel which is present in the missile but here there will be few technologies also uh, which will increase the storage and the mobility of the missile so again uh, it is a canister missile with a range capability between 1000 and 2000 kilometers in advanced technologies including composites propulsion system innovate guidance and control mechanism and the state of art navigations have been introduced in comparison to the other agni class missiles agni prime has improved parameters including maneuvering and accuracy okay agni class of missiles you can see the agni uh, the development from agni 1 to agni 5 700 to 800 kilometers and agni 5 we have is it is an icbm missile intercontinental it can be moved from one continent to another continent with a range of 5000 kilometers okay so this is what we have study here and this is what the details they have given here so we'll be going on to the next topic tejas to be integrated with brahmos new generation missile in few in few years so what is meant by new generation missile so we will see what is brahmos first okay brahmos is a joint venture between the drdo and the npom of russia brahmos is named after brahmaputra river and the moscow river of russia of russia it is a two stage first stage of uh, solid and second stage is liquid ramjet it is a multi missile platform missile it can be launched from land air and sea from the three areas it can be launched and it has a capability of pinpoint accuracy it operates on fire and for when you, when you fire then you don't have to say it will go automatically and uh, launch in the place where it has to be launched promos is one of the fastest cruiser missile in this world with a max speed of max 2.8 which is nearly three times more more than the speed of sound so what is brahmos new generation missile it is also a um, as we have seen brahmos missile can be launched from air land and sea here in this brahmos new generation missile it it can be also launched in air but if uh, if you compare the old generation missile Uh, it will weigh almost half as much as the current air launched version this is the difference between the new generation and the uh, normal promos missile and it can be mounted on lca tejas jet and we can target any place from this air uh, from this tejas aircraft okay so the current air launch missile weighs 2.65 ton but the new generation missile will be uh, weighing only 1.33 ton so what is the advantage advantage is if for example when the lca tejas can only carry up to uh, 5 tons of missile okay 5 tons of missile to attack enemy areas so if it weighs 2.65 ton how much can we carry maximum 2 right if it is 1.33 we can carry 
maximum of four missiles. This is the advantage, and we can attack more areas. Right? This is the advantage of Brahmos new generation missile. So this is for all today. Uh, please subscribe, and if you have any doubt, please post it in the comment box. And uh, interested aspirants can download the PDF from the above Telegram link. Thank you.